Right, good morning everyone. I am back out on the golf course at Hollywell and uh, well, I've got what I consider to be the most forgiving bag setup that I've ever seen, to be quite honest with you. Some of these clubs that I have with me today, well, they just make the game a whole lot easier. But that's my opinion and I've brought someone along with me today and uh, well, I'm going to get a second opinion on it. Yeah, so it's Lewis Johnson, who of course is a professional golfer, and I'm going to give you some clubs today, mate, which I don't think you'd normally, well, I know for a fact you wouldn't go near. I'm looking forward to it. Their main focus is forgiveness, not playability. But I want a second opinion, and I want, you've got no clubs with you. And the reason for that is, I'm going to caddy for you, and I'm going to select the clubs that I want you to play, and give me your opinion. Right, okay. Fair enough? Yep. This should be interesting because trust me, he's got a bit of a shock when he sees some of the clubs that I hand him in the next few minutes. We're starting off on a par four. What club would you normally play from here, Lou? I'd probably just hit a three wood off this tee. Three wood off the tee, three wood, right. So what three Let's go, let's carry on. I mean, so I've got, I'll hand you that. Now, this is a new lineup of HD models from Taylor Made in the Stealth 2 lineup. It's a three wood. It's is it sixty? Can you just check for me? Is it sixteen degrees? Uh, it's sixteen. I yeah. thought it was. So a little yeah. bit more loft than standard, but it's the head shape that is so much different. So much different. Yeah, yeah. Now, first thoughts on that sort of elongated crown. Not your regular style of club. No, it doesn't. It's not my regular sort of club. But, um, yeah, I fit for stuff like this all the time. Exactly. And actually, coming out there and hitting it would. You know, be massively, that was my other thought process. Uh, yeah, massively sort of advantageous to, because I'm just really looking forward to it in this, because I would never, th this is not designed for me, this is it. So. No, it's not, but I want you to see, Chris Dennis played with this when I was over in the States with him, and I couldn't get it out of his hands, even though, again, he's a pro like you, and I kept asking him, why are you using that club, Chris? And he said, well, why wouldn't I? Because it's just making life so much easier. So let's get this one teed up and uh, we'll get shot trace on it and let me know what you think of the uh, HD lineup from TaylorMade Stealth range. Well, it's more of that draw flight that I'd expect. You know, I, I imagine that's what the HD stands for, isn't it? Um, the, the, the weight of it is what really strikes you, isn't it? The weight in which is the, the shaft the or the head or? Just everything about it, just when, you know, I, I, without, you know, I've tried to keep a sort of, don't know what we're hitting. I imagine the swing weight on these is really light. So when it's moving, it just, it's completely different to what I'm used to, but it's great. It, you know, it's, I, I don't, I actually really like the look of it. Yeah. I like what? the look of it. It's not too offensive. You know, people, it's, you know, the, the draw stuff and, and, and stuff, you know, the elongated, generally they'll sit a little bit closed. Um, and, and that just puts a lot of the people like me off. But it sits lovely. So a good start. That's yeah. a three wood. Let's get down there, see where that's ending up, and I'll see if I can hand you an iron, which is also quite different. And uh, I'll be interested to see what you think of that. Right, Lou, we've got a yard. It's not ideal because he's hit the ball a little bit closer than I expected him to with that three wood. So we've got about 110 into that flag. And unfortunately, I don't have a club that fits that yardage for you. So I'm going to hand you a nine iron, which I know is going to be, you'd probably be playing one, just a smooth wedge. Yeah, but be fine. We're going to go nine that, iron. Hey, that three went too far. It's no problem. Now, I know you've had a glance at these, <laughs> but this is, so basically, this is still from that, oddly enough, that Stealth HD lineup. And it's this new iron, which is quite different in terms of the whole profile of it, really. Uh, heel to toe, oh, the wow. height of it, obviously the width of sole. Everything about it. Because I'd only seen it from that side. Right. But putting it down is quite a bit different, isn't it? Yeah. And it, it, it oozes that game improvement, super game improvement iron, but it's quite different. And what do you think of these? I think they're superb because I think they're like, the CG placement obviously is allowed to be pushed way back because of that yeah, width yeah. of sole and the shape They've of the head. They managed to design it quite nice as well, there, haven't they? It's... Well, they fit in really well with the stealth irons. Yep. So if you wanted to play the short irons in the standard stealth iron, and then put some of these from maybe seven, six, five iron, then I think these are great. Yeah, yeah. But again, not something you would ever, and, and again, this is totally out of, the last thing you wanna be playing with this kind of club in theory 
is um, a sort of controlled. Everything about these things is just sort of full on. They're not really a, a player's club, if you like. What I'm asking you to do here is play 110, bit of down breeze with a 9-9. Nine -nine. I want to see that's what right. you do and what your that's thoughts right. are. Well, the first thing that was interesting was that you were able to flight the ball down. Yeah. Um, without knowing anything about these and the lofts and stuff, yeah. um, the, the, the first thing is the amount of offset on them for yeah. me. Obviously, that's the, that's the big difference. Yeah. Um, and you could see that in the flight, couldn't you? you yeah. Know, it's trying to, um, which I think would, will be massive, massive for the people looking at these clubs. Um, offset is going to be their friend. You know, the ball trying not to go off to the right. And for me, the, the quality of the feel. The quality, the quality of the feel. I can't believe it. I was expecting it to sound like a tin of beans, if I'm honest. Um, do you know what, seriously, the question I have on my lips right now, I was going to ask you, and what do you think, though, in terms of sound and feel? That was the question I was going to ask you, because that's the biggest shock that I've got out of these things. That's nothing like what you'd expect. It seems no. like, a, you know, a big hollow body that you're just going to get an echo out of. Yeah. That's not going to be good. They've done an amazing job in terms of sound and feel. That's a short iron. I'd yeah. like you to play one of the longer ones in another hole or two. But uh, the interesting thing for me as well, everyone talks about when they get to game improvement irons that they're not, there's no playability. Yeah. They talk about shaping I don't, shots. I don't know about down there, but I, you know, I think I've managed to control my distance reasonably well yeah. with a club that and, I've never and hit And the before. flight as well, though, Luke. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, way better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, so we're um, off to a positive so, start. Yeah. Let's move on. Right, the next club I'm going to hand Lou is going to be driver. And for me, this is without doubt, in terms of the testing I've done so far, the most forgiving driver I've had in my mitts. And I want to know what a professional thinks of it. He's going to have a reg shaft in, he's going to have a ten and a half degree head. So it's over to Lou and uh, I'll introduce him to the Ping G430 Max driver. Right, so Lou, head cover off, you've had a look. What are your first thoughts in terms of the first few, really, of the G430 Max driver? It's just like a ping, isn't it? They, don't, like... they don't change too much, do they? No. They don't change too much. They, they, I, I, I love ping because they just, they kind of know that they do good stuff. Yeah. And they just go, well, we won't change it too much. They have a little bit this year, haven't they? Well, maybe only tweaks, but my evaluation is interesting because my video that I did on this was sort of said exactly what you've done, which Ping do forgiveness incredibly well. They do a look that appeals to the masses incredibly well. It's never too much out there. Nope. It's never too much of a change. And they just do it really well. The MOI in terms of this thing, in terms of however MOI is rated and scored, is off the chart in terms of forgiveness. Yeah. And it's back to that. You know, this whole bag is about focusing on forgiveness, playability and how easy it is to play these things. So it's a ball playing the seventh hole here at Hollywell, 445 yards, stroke index one. Oh, just not moving, is it? It's just gone dead straight. That's a, well, that's a good start. Yeah. But to be fair, you do it, your driver dead straight anyway, so I'm not expecting <laughs> not to see sure. anything different from My you. thing is, obviously I just slowed that down a little bit. There's no point in me going full tilt yeah. at that. Um, and it's exactly what it is. My, my thing, because I have done a bit of reading on these, um, the, the, the big sort of spiel is they, they, don't, they don't normally shout about distance ping, do they? Yeah. And they are clear that this one goes a further. Longer, so I'll be yeah. really interested to see where that goes. You know, I have sort of sort of taken a bit off that, if you like, and, and sort of... Um, but I love the way it sits. I think they've done a better nut job with the noise this, yeah. this time. Good point. Noise on 45, you know, put... Lou hasn't watched my video yet, by the way, so there's no, uh, there's no pre, that you, that's my big deal. Like, I hated the G425 yeah. and its predecessors because it was hard as hell off the face, so I'm really glad yeah. you picked up well, on that. Well, you know, people across the course, you can hear them with 45, you know, and it was a great club, but I think, you know, just from first... A little bit it, muted? Yeah, I like, I like the fact that he kept it nice and simple, like the, the colourway is nice, uh, but performance-wise, I don't expect to... Yo, the only thing that would shock me if this wasn't any good because yeah. they just make good gear, don't they? They do, yeah. Um, so no great surprises there. Yo, the really, map. really nice. Sits good, sounds good. Again, really light. I think it'll help most people. So I mean, my opinion is that this is quite possibly the kind of like 
the most, uh, what's the word, the, the, the driver that will fit in the hands of most club golfers. Yeah. If you, if you had to just hand one driver off the shelf to all your club members, I'd be picking that and saying that's probably your safest bet yeah. than where sort of the one fits all. They do that so well. Yeah. Right, drives off. Nothing really of great difference there in terms of the driver, but trust me, what I'm going to hand to Lewis next that is a bit different. Right, Lou has just ran off down the fairway to collect his drive. He says it's too far for what I need to do, and that's play a shot from in and around sort of 190-ish, because I'm gonna hand him this. This being, if you can see the number there, the sun is right into my eyes, is a nine wood. Now, I'd have no chance whatsoever of getting this in his hands, I know, but I'm really interested to see how this thing performs, because um, I'm not too bothered about yardage in terms of what it covers, but I want to see ball flight and what his response to it is. Because yet again, I think this is another club from ping that G430 range, which is absolutely foolproof and should end up in a lot of average golfers bags. Right, he's on his way back. Let's see what he thinks of this. Here you go, son. Now I know, and I've just said that I'd really struggle to get a nine wood in your hands. But trust me on this one, I really want your opinion. I want to know just how you think this plays out. We brought the club, the ball back rather. Anything. What what's your initial thoughts on it visually as a little bit of a uh, as as a fairway wood? As a as a fairway wood, it looks nice, it sits nice. Um there's loads of loft on it. There's just so much loft. Have on you ever it, seen it? so much loft on a wood before? Only when you brought them to me. Yeah. I was expecting something like this. The stuff you've given me so far has been quite nice. Well, let me, I'm really let me, interested in it. You the, get the, it the thing that strikes me the most, yeah. I have to say, the, how short the shaft is. Yeah. Which I, I wasn't again, expecting that. But a real positive in terms of control, though, Luke. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing for me in this type of club is that, it, you, again, picked up on really good points that we've mentioned in the initial reviews, is that the reason this club does so well is you've got control over the club head. Then you've got loft, which is a you know a major help for you. Well, I, I think I actually quite like. You can see a lot of the face. Yeah. I don't know. It's well, just it something could... new for me. It, you know, it's something new. I'm really interested. I'd like to think I could hit it out the middle with a shaft this short. But what do you think about the, the the opposite end of the spectrum? I've been negative towards three woods because what you don't see is a lot of the face. It's a complete opposite to that. And for an average golfer or a handicapped golfer. Yeah. That can play heavy on the mind. You yeah. don't think you're going to get the ball airborne. But more than, more than ever now, at. something I find a lot when dealing with, um, you know, golfers is they can't launch the fairway woods. You know, the fairway woods are hotter. The centre of gravity placement is changing, and um, people can't launch it. Yeah. So you know, a lot of people shouldn't really be playing 14, Well, that's been my big deal. Woods. Yeah, I, I've really sort of encouraged people to yep. have a look at more lofted. So let's see again. Let's have a look. I'll stay still. We'll see get shot got. tracer on this one. Like I said, I'm not sure a yard is. It might be a little bit of a stretch in terms of where we're at to uh, to the flag. Well, that's exactly what I was expecting to see in terms of ball flight. Oh wow! Just went so, straight up, didn't it? I think, to be honest with you, probably is it a similar distance to what I would have done? Because I think we're pitched in around 200, and that's what about 10 yards short, do you reckon? Yeah, again, I just sort of backed off a little bit because of the reg shaft, um, just to kind of obviously make it play a little bit. But give me your thoughts um, on, on 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 everything on, on in terms of how I suppose feels how you, good, sounds okay. good. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd be really um, I'd reluctantly play it because yeah. I'm even stood there questioning, you know, where do I, you know, what ball, you know, where does this go? Yeah. But ease of use. Oh, oh, oh wow, yeah. What do you I, think I'd of ball to, flight? I mean, just. It, Completely, I can't create that ball flight. Yeah. With anything in my bag. Yeah. So, and I think if it, if everyone asks themselves that question, can you create an easy to launch, like longer shot? Yeah. You know, um, that that's something that I definitely think. Yeah, you know, I'd be really interested to plug a few different shafts into this head for me and really. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if could, you think about it, it's a twenty-four degree, um, twenty-four degree head. Yeah. You're probably looking at around maybe a five iron equivalent. And that's not a five iron ball flight, is it? No, no. Um, really good, uh, yeah. really good. I, you know, don't ask me whether I put it in the bag. 
No. But I'm certainly going to give it another go. Well, it's more so of, you you know, the, the, the position I'm asking you to put yourself in is from an average golfer's perspective, he's on the fairway, he's 200 yards out. You know... I'm going to controversially say something here now. Go on. I... I think this might suit people better than hybrids. Yeah. I, I, I mean, in, in my opinion, again, it, from, from my perspective, just the shaping of it, yeah. I, prefer a, I prefer the head on a yeah, fairway Yeah, I, I just think I that if, if people can get this in their hands and go, you know, just the way it sits, yeah. I don't want to completely disregard every hybrid on the market, but yeah. I think from ease of use, everyone should be sort of having a think about their hybrids and, and maybe putting something like okay. that. So. Right. Interesting response, that one. Right, we're going to move a little bit further forward, stay on the same hole because I've got another one for him, which again is going to be so alien in terms of what uh, a professional golfer would ever consider using. But for me, it's another no-brainer in terms of uh, handicapped golfers' bags. Right, Lou, we've moved a little bit further forward we're on the same hole. We're going to play and maybe have to pull that back a bit. I'm going to go for around 160 yards. In there is another club from Ping, if you can just dig out a hybrid and it's a hybrid with more loft than you've ever seen in your life oh, no. um yeah oh wow so this is a i've never seen hybrid. one of these in the flesh you've never seen one in the flesh so we'll be interested to get some first responses in that sense um seven hybrid yeah 34 degrees aloft um eight iron maybe equivalent 34 degrees something like that maybe a traditional sort of seven yeah. a strong lofted eight iron but trust me, this thing is, uh, again, presents so much loft at address. It's a real sort of confidence booster for the average golfer. And again, hopefully, you're going to notice very short shaft, almost a bit weird at times. Let's have a look. Let's switch this one round Let's and get have on a look. Blue. So talk me through what you're seeing. And um, uh, I'm hoping. what are your thoughts on the score lines across the front and the way it frames the ball? Any Anything you pick up on there? Yeah, it's the same as the nine wood. You can see a lot of the face. I like what they've done. Um, a good visual for people, you know. Alignment wise. Yeah, alignment wise. You know, yeah. just the, the stuff on the top doesn't generally do a lot for people. You know, that stuff on the face is good. I'd like to think I could uh, hit the green with this. That's beautiful. You know what's really noticeable just from behind the camera is the sound. The sound is so different to what uh, the, the previous Ping G lineup. And I know I've already commented on it, but oh my God, it's so much softer. So. Is this the highest lasted rescue they do? In rescue, yes. Yeah. Yeah, re really good. I can see this. I can see this really fitting in well with people where they um, where they stop their irons at seven iron yeah. and then put this in as a six iron replacement. Yeah. Yeah, you can clearly see the ball speed's really good on it. And uh, yeah, I, I think the short the shaft people will be able to. Well, I think going back, you made a good point in the previous comment about the nine wood. Is like, how um, can you do the same as what you've just done with your eight, seven iron equivalents? Yeah, and uh, I think I think you know. I hope people pick it up. I am easing off a little bit to kind yeah, yeah. of suit the. It's just easy. It's yeah. easy to launch. I know that's easy for me to say, but that's the whole question. Is you know, people are trying to make the game easier for people, yeah. for, for for players, and I certainly think this does. And I, and I think it would take a lot of the options out of it for people. You know, people would probably stand there and think, well, oh, you know, 160 yards, oh, is it a six, seven, five, yeah, whatever yeah. iron? I don't know. Oh, do I not hit me five iron because I don't hit it that well? You know, just have one and yeah. just hit it, just hit it, you know, clean. Again, not for, not for me, but I, I think everyone should be trying. You know, this G430 range I'm excited about because, you know, they've, they've managed to kind of troubleshoot G425, the sound, the feel. It, it looks good and it's, it's just that easy to use. Right, so so far we've seen clubs from Stealth 2, we've seen clubs from the G430 range. It only seems right that we throw something in from Callaway. So Lou, you've got there is another hybrid under the cover. It says a three, but uh, it's not a three hybrid. It is in fact a five. Um, totally different than the G430 in terms of looks. Totally different. But also totally different in terms of what Callaway have done before. Um, oh, it's windy, isn't it? Um, they've changed the shape. They've changed the shape here. And yeah. well, they've changed the crown as well because they've always had the sort of high toe look, and they've developed something which is much more of a almost like a mini fairway wood. 
Yeah, it doesn't sit as upright as no, the hybrids normally do. Yeah. I think, now we've uh, got, again, visually, anyway. Yardage is a tough one to gauge. We're going to play 180. If you just let me get the camera set up, and look. then you can let me know what your thoughts are on this. And maybe a bit of a comparison to the difference you feel between this and what you've just the others, hit yeah. in the G430. That's a great shot, it's right on the flag. Sit down, ball. See, the distance was all right, wasn't Super it? Super shot, interestingly enough, quite a different ball flight, Lou. Yeah, a uh, completely different feel. It actually feels completely different to how I, how I think it was. I don't know whether that's based on Obviously, the stuff I've hit earlier. Um, a lot more solid. Um, I think very different to what I've used in the TaylorMade and the Ping there. It it's felt as though what, it, in sound and feel? Yeah, just, just sound, feel. The ball coming off just felt a little bit different, maybe a little harder. I, 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 I don't know whether that's a, um, a good way to describe it, but the ball speed seems to be there. I don't know, say, we, we haven't hit this in, in, indoors, but it come off really quick. You know, we thought we were at a stretch with yeah. this yardage on this day, there's quite a lot of wind. Um, and it sits, it sits really nice um, for me. You know, they, they used to sit really upright and I would never really entertain them. Um, maybe not, I don't know, maybe doesn't feel as easy to use as them, but performance wise, I'd be interested to get them side by side in the room. Yeah. Um, almost which, feels like, even though it's not, almost feels like more of a players' club than perhaps yeah. the likes of the G430 did. I would definitely, I would definitely say that. And again, it, you know, again, everything would point to that as well. The shafts, are, you know, the characteristics of the shaft would be different as well. But certainly, ball speed seems to be there. Yeah. Um, you know, and the flight was a little lower. You know, so, but all round good. You, you know, I'm quite impressed with all these. I thought you were going to stitch me up, but they were, they were all good. Right, so we've finished those few holes and they're uh, really interesting for me to watch. And to be honest with you, it was good to hear you reiterate some of the points I made in my initial videos as well. So yeah. that was nice. But what would be kind of your, have you learned anything from like what you Yeah, tried? I think I, I always tell people to be open-minded, but then, you know, I think I need to apply a little bit of that to my own, um, th the, the way I think about my, my bag and my setup, because... Um, you know, I, I've had a sort of similar sort of set of clubs for a long time in terms of the makeup of set and the, the sort of the brands and the spec and stuff. And what I really learned is, you know, the, the, the feel and the sound and the performance of things that are designed to make the clubs easier. Yeah. Not too dissimilar to what, you know, um, everything's really... I don't think people make bad products no. anymore, do they? Well, I, think it was, I was surprised at how good all of it was and how easy it was for me to just go, yeah. But when you do the testing, and obviously I do it every week, and you're trying different clubs, you start at, uh, although everyone says everything is the same, there are nuances in there that change. The difference between like the Paradigm Hybrid compared to the G425 Hybrid, there's a big noticeable difference in the sort of sound and the ball flight. And clearly the performance was aimed at different golfers, even though a five hybrid you would say is very user friendly. The Paradigm yeah. is much more of almost a player's version very compared different. to the G430. Yeah, very different, yeah. And um, we always promote like, you know, going and trying it, going and getting a fitting and stuff. But I totally agree, totally agree. I think um, the one thing that surprised me the most was the G430. Um, As in the range or? Yeah, just the clubs. I, I mean, I hit one of the TaylorMade Deny and one of the Callaway that, but I, I haven't entertained sort of ping drives and, and that's something I think would be my, you know, that would be my standout, you know, of the, the clubs that I tried. Right. But, you know, the, the TaylorMade 3 Ward, the Nine Ward. And again, the paradigm, I think, from the Callaway wasn't necessarily my favourite, but if I was looking for more sort of ball speed and a, a hybrid that is a little bit more penetrating than, you know, from, from yeah. initial sort of hitting... Then you go down that then route. I, then I'd look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it was a good product. It was just not what I was expecting it to do. And Well, I think that's the interesting thing. I'm glad, and like I said, they, these are clubs never going to be used by Lou. These are the type of clubs you're likely to recommend when you're doing your custom fits inside. They're the type of clubs that average golfers are going to use but all it was interesting to see was a fresh set of eyes in looking at something that uh, you know I get all excited about and try and encourage average golfers to try and try these clubs because I seem to be thinking that these are no-brainers in terms of how much easier they potentially make the yeah. game at the particularly that tougher end of the bag which is always the longer end of the bag um, but there was options in there right from a 34 degree 
uh, hybrid to replace your whatever it is, your six iron, your seven iron, right the way up to a, a three wood, which I dismiss out of uh, sort of the question for a lot of average golfers, but that HD version yeah. all of a sudden makes that a playable club as well. So. Definitely, yeah. Right, well, that's it. We can do no more. Uh, thanks for Lou for getting involved this morning, giving his feedback. We've had another great morning weather-wise up here at Hollywell Golf Club. I'm going to throw one thing out here before this camera blows over because it's all over the show at the moment. Who would be interested in coming up and spending a bit of time with myself and Lewis if I was to organise a day or two up here at Hollywell? Maybe do a little bit of club testing, maybe get a bit of coaching off Lewis and then maybe a little bit of a competition in and around the course. Give me your feedback down below if any of you are potentially interested on that because that's something we may look at doing very, very soon. That camera is about to blow over. Thanks for watching. See you soon.